You know, normally I just rush in, grab what I need and charge back out again. But now that I'm taking the time to look around, there is so much cool stuff here for Darcy. Oh, I know. And how cool are the fish to look at? I could stare at them all day. They're just so relaxing. Well, don't get too relaxed. We've got a lot to do today. We've got our Smart Pets competition entries to look at. We've got segments to film for next week's episode. There's a lot. Well, we better get a move on. In the meantime, you guys sit back and enjoy the show. Oh, and if you've got a pet that does some cool tricks, then get them on video during the ad break and check out later how you can enter our competition. Come on, Lara, get a move on. We're in a hurry. You grab the giraffe. Yeah, one of the spots. Yeah. Now we need some dog treats. Uh, you need a bigger trolley. Dogs pulling on the lead is probably one of the biggest behaviour issues that owners have. Absolutely. And it's so important, isn't it, Trish, to get onto it early? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, sure. it's just going to keep happening with more frequency and intensity. So I thought we'd use Milo here, who's a little puppy who pulls a little bit. Um, Trish, you're going to show us one of the techniques. Yeah, there are many techniques out there, but we're just going to work on a very simple one that most owners can, can use, and especially if you've got a young puppy uh, that you can certainly start working on. And it's important that uh, your yeah, owners don't allow the puppies mm. to learn to pull, because then it gets harder as it goes it on. It does, exactly. All right, well, we're going to use, Milo's not too bad, so we're going to use Darcy as a bit of a, an enticement to get him to pull, and let's go. Absolutely, let's do it. <laughs> so for this technique to work, you'll need some food treats. And basically it's quite simple. As you start walking forward, if the puppy starts to pull, you need to stop. So you don't keep going any further. You lure the puppy back with some food. When the puppy is in the right position, you want to mark and of course reward with the food. And then you keep going and you repeat the process. The main aim is that you do not continue walking forward if the puppy is pulling. So the aim is to stop, lure the puppy around with some food, reward when in position and then keep going again. If you have an older, more experienced puller on your hand, then the technique will change just a little bit. Again, you start with the dog by your side and then you start taking a step forward. Now, if your dog pulls, you must stop. Do not continue going forward. I would like you to put a little bit of pressure on the, on the lead, just going backward a little bit and wait for the dog to yield into that pressure. Once the dog's yielded in, you can lure back to the side and you can reward with a bit of food if you want to. Take a few steps forward again and repeat the process if your dog pulls again. So remember, if your dog pulls, do not continue to go forward. You must stop, put a bit of pressure, wait for the dog to yield off that pressure, lure back to the side, and then of course reward with some food and repeat the process until your dog no longer pulls. You did well, Milo. Well done. Thanks, Trish. You're welcome. No worries. You certainly did. Hopefully that'll help you if you've got a puppy. There are some tips on the Pooches at Play website as well. Or if you've got an older dog and it has become a real problem, then do seek out the services of a qualified trainer. Visit the NDTF website for that. Well done, buddy. Oh, so cute. Oh, Darcy. Stella as always. <laughs> <laughs> It seems today that many people have a pooch with an itchy paws or they've got a friend with a dog that's got yeasty ears or a smelly belly. It's becoming more and more of a problem. Now, Fivo, before we get into the finer details, I need to know where the name Augustine Approved came from. Well, Guyton, uh, our company started off with a little boxer named Augustine who's not so little anymore. And originally we were going to produce fresh food. Instead, we now offer free recipes. And it was named after the first food that Augustine's tummy approved and helped nurse her back to health. That sounds perfect. So why are so many more and more dogs suffering from skin irritations? Well, I believe that every living being uh, any ailment that they suffer, any disease, all stems from an imbalance in the body. And in the case of skin problems, I believe the majority of cases uh, stems from an imbalance in the gut. So what you're actually saying is that these skin irritations are not topical. Correct. They're actually an imbalance in the gut, uh, which is exasperated by the lifestyle that we live. Right, so what's causing these gut imbalances? Uh, primarily things that are a lot of the times not in our control, pollution, toxins, exposure and things like that, but the beautiful thing is that we are in complete control most of the time of what goes in our dog's mouths, what we inject into their bodies and what we apply to their skin and knowledge is power. So when we weigh up risk versus reward after we do a lot of research, we can choose what they're, what they're being exposed to internally. Right, so would you still suggest people go down the veterinary route when their dogs have a skin problem? I'm all for uh, veterinary guidance along the way and constantly checking in. Any good veterinarian will tell you that a gut imbalance needs to primarily be addressed through diet before we head on to the pharmaceutical route. I believe it's a last resort. It's just like the inserts say, there's a list of side effects. 
and they can cause further imbalances down the track. So something that was relatively easy to address to begin with may end up taking a lot longer. So you've got the Healthy Skin Bundle. What's in that and how does it help? Well, what I love about Augustine Improved is it's about a message before it's about products. So we believe that food is medicine and obviously a good diet and a good lifestyle will help to maintain health. Uh, the Healthy Skin Bundles contain our best-selling products. We have, again, free recipes on the website, feeding tips and so on. And the whole idea of the Healthy Skin Bundle is to promote the normal gut function and optimum health. So this stuff's good enough for us to, to eat? Absolutely, we were the first company in the world to make a 100% certified organic canine supplement to human standards made entirely from whole foods, so cheers. Okay, just before we dive in, I just want to say thank you because you've cleared a lot of things up for me and hopefully Fibo's cleared up a lot of things for you. If you'd like to learn more, head to the Augustine Approved website and in the meantime, I'm going to work on my healthy coat. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably end up barking too, but <laughs> cheers. Woof, woof. That's delicious. Beautiful stuff. I can feel it working already. Have you ever thought of owning a common farm animal in your suburban backyard? Well, chickens are becoming more and more popular for people to have as a common pet. Now, I'm actually thinking of getting some myself, so I thought I'd talk to Darren here and get some tips. How you going, Darren? Good guy, how are you? Pretty good. So, what made you decide to get some chickens? Uh, well, we moved out to this one acre property and thought we'd like to um, have the farming aspect here, which is close into town. So we thought chickens was the uh, easiest way to uh, get that ball rolling. Awesome. So what do you love about it? Uh, so the fact that we could get them as day olds and we've grown and raised them uh, to be four and a half years old now. Um, and since we've had them then, they're reasonably tame. They don't run away from us. They uh, provide us fresh eggs, clean up our scraps, provide good compost. Nice free range yeah, absolutely. Yeah, organic eggs. Yep. Any double yokers? Yeah, I've had a few of them, especially in spring when they get back into laying and the weather turns better. Yep. And you said you've had them since they were chicks. So yep. are they, do they get quite, uh, you know, affectionate? Can you hold them and give them a pat? Uh, yeah, they're quite scared initially, but the more you handle and play with them, the more um, uh, tame would be the word to use. They're not, they're not completely tame like a dog, but they are, they're much better than some. Yeah. Sure. So food, what kind of feed do you give them? Uh, so they've got an all-round pallet that um, they have constant access to, that they uh, graze on throughout the day. Um, there's many different types you can pick that I, depending on what time of year, I change it up for them. Um, and they also get the tail scraps inside, which is good. So they love that. They hear the bucket coming. As soon as they hear it coming out the back door, they come running, uh, which is quite cool. It's a great process, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and good compost you end up Yeah, absolutely. With. So I use all that. Um, once I change out the, the roosts and the uh, nesting boxes, I use that as good mulch for the trees and the, and the fruit trees and veggies and things. What other things do you need to consider when taking care of them? Uh, so regular worming's important. You would never want to uh, crack on, uh, an egg on Sunday morning and find worms in there. That'd be real Are awkward. Are you kidding me? No, nah, deadly serious. Oh. oh, wow, but a bit, a bit extra protein, I imagine. Uh, it would be, yeah, but I would, not the protein I would choose. And just keeping the hen house nice and dry, so if it gets wet or just removing their manure and things, just keeping it nice. And, and what about clean. exercise? Do you let them out for a run? Uh, yeah, so they, um, we don't have fences here and they roam around the backyard without running away quite well and they go around in a flock and scratch all the mulch off the trees, which is really helpful. Um, and they just roam around and eat all the bugs and the grass and when it starts to get dark they just put themselves away. It's almost automatic. 
I live in, in suburbia uh, Melbourne, but there's uh, there's foxes around, I've seen them. So Yeah, there, there is, and there's some out here too. So just making sure that the um, your chicken coop is very uh, predator proof. So digging wire down and making sure all the doors are closed and just regular checking to see if there's any weak spots to try and keep them safe. Stop that cunning Mr. Fox digging under oh, the Oh yeah, they're surprised what they can get into. <laughs> All right, Darren, as I said, I'm going to get some chickens soon. Mm -hmm. My wife and I have got a short list of names because we can only have three. Yep. So I'm going to throw them at you. You ready? Yep, ready. Victoria Peckham. Yep. Love Mar it. Margaret Hatcher. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Yoko Ono. Yep. Uh, Chrissy Hensworth. Very yeah, clever. Feather Graham, Feather yep. Locklear. Yep. But my all time favourite is Princess Leia. Love it. Definitely have to use that one. Yeah, I we'll get yep. more eggs out of her for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, there you go, guys. If you're feeling clucky like me, head on down to your local pet stock store and speak to one of their chicken experts. <laughs> How about we go check the coop and see if there's some eggs? Let's go. Looking for somewhere to escape with your pooch? Then take a look at this week's Take Your Pet Feature Properties. Established on the beautiful Hunter River in 1828, Dalwood Estate is regarded as the birthplace of Hunter Valley wine. Their passionate and knowledgeable staff can offer you a wide selection of unique and exciting wine tasting experiences. Or if you'd rather bring your four-legged friend for a picnic and enjoy the beautiful view, the estate provides barbecue facilities and sheltered picnic areas set on 260 park-like acres overlooking the Hunter River. Nearby, Hungerford Hill is a boutique estate in the heart of the Hunter Valley. They have a proud reputation for producing distinguished wines and providing a memorable cellar door experience. Their friendly and knowledgeable staff will guide you through a selection of award-winning wines while your pooch relaxes beside you. Just two hours north of Sydney, they provide a dog-friendly tasting that's second to none. <laughs> Established in 1986, the Berry Farm Cellar Door and Cottage Cafe is a dog-friendly winery located in Western Australia's Margaret River. The winery produces something a little different, making sparkling fruit wines, dessert wines, ports, liqueurs, ciders and vinegars. You can also visit the Cottage Cafe and Garden to try some of the fresh local produce. Whether you're travelling or just looking for a place to unwind with friends, visit the Berry Farm. For more pet-friendly accommodation ideas, visit the Take Your Pet website. Make sure you get our good side. Yeah, yeah, turn around the other okay. way. Okay, one, two, three. Ah, oh, that's a winner. That doesn't even need a filter. Oh, very funny, Carson. <laughs> so who do I upload it to? Uh, at Pictures at Play, and they can go on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. One handle? Yeah, for that's all handy. of them. Okay. But also actually tag at Lara Shannon and, of course, at Dynamite Darcy, because he doesn't want to miss out. He's got heaps of followers. Uh, who are you? It doesn't matter. At Lara's sidekick. At Guyton Bradley. <laughs> One more? <laughs> sure. Here we go. Yay! There can be a few misconceptions around raw feeding for your pets. So I'm here with Dr. Dan Capps, who has successfully integrated raw feeding into his Sunshine Coast veterinary practice. How are you, Dan? Well, thank you. <laughs> now, why are you happy to be such an advocate for raw feeding? It gives us another avenue of healthy feeding for animals, mm -hmm. and I think there's great benefits both medically as yes. well as just the general animal welfare of the animals over the long term with raw feed. Okay, and what are some of the more notable results that you've seen when, they've, when dogs have changed to a raw food diet? Weight loss, better yes. skin, yep. uh, healthier joints, uh, healthier coats, uh, a lot of general benefits just in terms of helping weight loss with joints and with belly problems, food, um, reactivity and IBD, yes. inflammatory bowel syndrome. Syndromes we see, we're starting to see more and more in animal welfare coming through. Why then do we find so many vets are against raw feeding? I think it's lack of education and training. Mm -hmm. At university, we really, in my era, we really only received about one lecture on yep. small animal nutrition. And so vets going out into the workforce and into their first jobs, and they may be influenced by corporate groups and their bosses, what they, what they think and what they sell and what they want to promote. Yes. And for me, it's also about lack of confidence that they haven't seen the years mm. and, and years of history behind a product right. that gives happy, healthy dogs and the benefits over the long term. Okay. And do you see a bit of a shift happening? We do. I think there's a great shift happening. Yeah. And, and it's not polarising shift. I think mm. people are starting to, to use combinations of mm -hmm. foods and, and integrate it into every practice and, and through most stores as well. And so based on your experience, what would be your advice for someone that's wanting to consider raw feeding? 
uh, have a chat with a veterinary clinic and veterinary staff, even just on reception, and allow them to guide you and ask the right questions. Uh, tell them the history about your puppy dog, any concerns that you might have. Mm -hmm. The raw food won't suit every dog, but it does suit an awfully large number of dogs mm -hmm. with subtle little medical conditions that you may want to have that easy change of a diet mm -hmm. to help them over the long term. Okay. But have a chat with your veterinarian, explain it so you've got confidence with it as well yes. and, and you'll enjoy what comes out the back end far better, <laughs> I'm sure. Now, are there also some specific, I guess, things we need to look at when choosing a raw food brand? I guess it's not everything's equal, is it? With any food brand, I always say, don't let your little one be the guinea pig for a new brand coming out. Yeah. Go to something with 18 years of history where they've had entire lifespans of dogs and cats coming through mm -hmm. and with having no problems whatsoever and with huge safety and that's what you want to look for is that 18 years of history. Yes, we know Big Dog's been around for that long so if you'd like to find out more about their range you can visit the Big Dog website. You can also visit Pooches at Play to find out more about raw feeding but before I let you go Dan Kevin's very relaxed. Kevin is very relaxed. And you know, that's because Kevin, I hear, has got something special. He's got his own clone range, hasn't he? He does have his own clone range, yes. Tell us but how that came about. Kevin was a, is a bit of a, a celebrity around the clinic. He's, he's <laughs> been he's been trained to go into, into patients that don't like being on their own and to keep them company and keep them happy and just to run around and keep that, that atmosphere around the clinic. So he's also been a blood donor. Oh. And he's there for, um, it's a fundraiser we did for Wilvo's. Okay. Where he's got his own fragrance, called Kevin, made by Kevin, <laughs> and his own shampoo and toiletry range as well. Well, I have one question though. Does it smell like Kevin? Definitely does not. Definitely does not smell like Kevin. That's Thank good. Me. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dan. And thanks, Kevin. No offence, buddy. It's all for a good cause, isn't it? <laughs> winter wave. Wave hello to Winter the parrot. He's more than just a pretty bird. This smart pet might sometimes lie down on the job. After all, it's a tough life in front of the camera. But you'll find it quite surprising to know that he also has a way of turning a few heads with his tricks. Winter is also a bit of a gun when it comes to not only dancing, but having a I quick chat too. I love you. I love you. Plus, Winter will warm your heart with his What's animal impressions. Puskat. Hi. Are you a sad puppy? He sure is quite the character. <laughs> Think your pet has the smarts to win our Smart Pets competition? Then make sure you get your entry in. One lucky viewer will receive a Pawson prize pack valued at over two and a half grand, including a $500 pet stock gift voucher, a year's supply of pet food, a $500 HIF wellbeing and massage voucher for you, and $500 worth of family parks gift vouchers. There's also three $100 pet stock vouchers for runner-ups. To enter, just send us a video of your pet doing their amazing trick. The more unique and talented, the better. So be as smart as your pet and enter to win. Visit poochesofplay.com for more details. Hip dysplasia is a common inherited malformation in dogs. It can be quite debilitating and symptoms will often present themselves when a dog is still young and physically immature. Charles, what ages are you seeing dogs present themselves here for hip dysplasia? So hip dysplasia is um, actually a biphasic disease. So we see them really early at kind of six to nine months of age. And then if they haven't been treated early, they can present at two to three years of age with uh, evidence of arthritis. Early on, what we see is just clinical signs of the looseness of the hip, where the hip is actually popping out of the joint. And uh, with uh, Henry's case specifically, Mary could feel the hip popping or clunking in and out of the joint um, as he was lying down. Uh, clinical signs that we see typically with that would be reluctance to exercise. Sometimes in the middle of a walk, halfway through the park, they'll lay down and they won't want to go any further. Sometimes owners even have to pick them up and carry them home. Uh, the other thing that we see interestingly is a bunny hopping gait which literally looks like a bunny hopping through the meadow with both legs working in unison. If you get it early on, particularly when they're less than a year of age, you can actually do some things to prevent them from developing full-on hip dysplasia. Uh, things including as little as just weight loss, exercise modification, maybe some cartilage protective uh, medications, all the way up to surgery. And surgery is actually very effective if it's done early enough to prevent uh, arthritis from ever forming. <coughs> Henry was actually a bilateral disease. This x-ray happens to show that one hip is more dislocated than the other. We can see 
here that there's a much wider joint space on this side than there is on the other, and that's because the, the ball is actually popping out of the socket, and that's what's causing the, the clunking uh, when Henry sits down. What we see later on is that you actually start developing a lot, of, a lot of arthritis, and you have extra bone formation, and the joint capsule is really thickened and stuff, and they can actually get to the point that you have bone on bone grinding because the cartilage is completely worn away. Oh, that sounds nasty, Henry, yeah. doesn't it, hey? So, so with Henry, um, his mum was, was really good at bringing him to you early and, yep. and you were able to get onto it quite quickly. Yeah, yeah. So he was young enough um, that he hadn't de developed any arthritis in the joint at all. He was only about nine months of age when he got to us and so we were able to do a procedure called a triple pelvic osteotomy. What we do with the surgery is we make a cut here, here and here and we're going to roll the cup over so that it covers the socket more effectively. So on this model? Yeah, shows... so uh, this is looking from his belly side here, so we're making a cut here, here and here and we're going to rotate it around and then we put a plate in which is pre-configured and when we put that in, what it's going to do is it's going to force that cup around and keep it in that position. And you've got a, a post-operative shot there, I a CT? Do. Yeah, so it's a, a CT scan that was done and this shows the plate in place with the screws going through the bone and we can see the step that we've created there and rotated that socket around. So that's a zoomed in shot of, of that, exactly that particular Exactly this area. spot right here. We know with Henry here that he, he did have pet insurance, so it would have significantly helped his owner with yeah, the cost. Yeah, what I mean, are we I, looking at for this surgery? Our cost for a bilateral triple pelvic osteotomy, so both sides being done at the same time, is about $8,000, including pre-op x-rays, post-op x-rays, pain medication to go home and that kind of thing. And then that doesn't even count physiotherapy, that's a really good idea to do later on. Um, sometimes owners have to take time off work. Um, uh, you might have to do long-term medication. Sometimes they put them on long-term cartilage protectant medications that might last for a lifetime. And so certainly having that, um, that luxury, the benefit of having the pet insurance from the start is really helpful. So how's Henry doing now? He's great. He boundless energy. He can exercise without any limitations, um, and he seems to be doing really well. He looks like he's walking fantastically. Yeah. Well, yeah. well done, Charles. Thank you. I'd love to take credit for it, but actually, Henry and his mum did most of the work. All right. Well, it's a shared process, isn't it? <laughs> and if you want to follow Henry's recovery, check out his Instagram page at Old English Henry. If you'd like to know more about pet insurance for your dog, have a look at the HAF website. What do you think, Henry? Hey. Oh, it's lucky I've got a big boot with all this stuff for Darcy. Hey, what's this for? You don't even own a bird. Oh, I'm thinking of getting some, but also it's great for attracting wild birds into the backyard. Yeah, we'll get a move on. We're due on set in 20 minutes. We hope you guys enjoyed watching the show. We certainly had a good time making it. Hey, did you just admit that shopping with me was fun? Uh, no, no, I said that making the show with you was fun. Um, shopping with you is uh, an experience. Oh. Well, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show and join us again next week. I better get going because someone's getting a little bit antsy. <laughs>